Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Previously we implemented the geometry component view for game entities in the editor. Here we can drag and drop a mesh asset onto this icon in order to change its geometry. We can also save and load the project with this information, except we have some small issues that trigger a few assertion failures, so I'd like to fix those before we continue. The first problem that we have here is that we are checking for a valid GUID for applied materials when the project is being loaded. However, we are not saving this GUID in the project file. The one we see here is for the material asset that contains the shaders. We can make the serializer save the GUID for applied materials as well, simply by adding a data member attribute to the GUID property of the asset base class. Now after saving the project, we can reload it without the failing assertion. Next, we have to make sure that we activate and deactivate the game entities when the containing scene is active or inactive. This will take care of uploading and unloading assets that are used by the game entities and their components. When the project is being unloaded, which happens for example when we close the editor, we set the current scene to inactive, which will deactivate all game entities, and that in turn will unload all assets that were uploaded to the engine. Trying to load the project, we get another assertion failure, and this time it's because the default cube mesh asset can't be found in the asset registry. This is because we are not registering the default assets before the game entities are loaded. This is done by calling asset registry reset method, which is called in the content watchers reset method. We can see that this is called only once, and that's just after loading the project, which already needs the data from the asset registry. So we have to move this call to an earlier point before the project is deserialized. This happens in the static load method of the project. So we can construct the project and content paths and call content watcher reset. We can also make sure that we revert back to the project that might already have been loaded, in case loading the new project failed for any reason. One thing that I don't like is that the project's current property uses the data context of the main window to get the loaded project. This accesses the UI thread and causes problems when used in non-UI threads. Furthermore, it's also not a good practice to refer to UI controls in the ViewModel class. Therefore, I'm going to change this and set it explicitly when the project is loaded. And we set it to null when the project is unloaded. Oh look, everything is disabled now. What have I done? Oh, I see. We are unloading the project right after loading it. Remember that current property is not coming from the data context anymore, so we have to call this up here, which is before the project file has been deserialized. Okay, now we can run the editor without any assertion failures. Now let's add a feature that is needed in order to keep the editor responsive while loading geometry assets. Here we see that when we call getMetadata method in the geometry asset class, it will call a generateIcon method in order to create icons per submesh. Let's see how and when this is used. Here I'll import the famous sponsor scene, which contains almost 400 submeshes. As you can see, all these submeshes are merged into two submeshes. <laughs> 
However, this is a bit too much merging and it will prevent us from assigning textures to the original submeshes. So what I'd like to do is that when coalesce meshes is checked, we put all submeshes in the same mesh asset instead of merging them or saving them to separate mesh files. This is done by simply disabling a few lines of code here. So basically we don't call coalesce meshes function anymore. I'll just leave it there in case we come across some situation where we do want to merge submeshes. Now let's import the sponsor scene again. It's saved to this asset file and we can see that it has many submeshes now. Therefore we'll be able to assign an applied material with different textures to each one of the submeshes. Now let's see what happens when I drop this onto this icon to replace the interceptor model. Keep an eye on the memory usage and the responsiveness of the editor. As you can see the UI is completely unresponsive. I can't interact with anything and the memory usage is off the roof. And this is in the release build. In fact this took so long that I thought the editor was crashing but it finished just before I closed the editor. Here we can see that it used 8 GB of memory and took almost 1.5 minutes to do this. Obviously this is entirely unacceptable and we need to fix it. Just remember the memory usage and the time it took so we can compare later. By the way let me enable this assertion again since we fixed the issue earlier. Ok so the way I'd like to fix this is by doing the icon generation part asynchronously. I'll explain while I'm preparing this method to do that. So for generating the icons we are using the geometry view control which is also used in the geometry editor to display a geometry asset. Since this is a user control it can only be used on a UI thread and therefore we can't simply use it on any random thread in order to make it asynchronous. So we have to create a second UI thread and use that for rendering the geometry view. Since we are going to do icon generation asynchronously, we'll use the asset icon which we already have while the submesh icons are being generated. Next I add a new method that will take the mesh LOD which has the actual mesh data and the list of mesh info that contains info about each one of the submeshes including their icon. We call this method asynchronously on the main UI thread after which it will continue its work since we are not waiting for it to return. It's like a fire and forget function call. In this method we generate the icons and set them for each submesh when they are ready. Because we are setting the icons at a later time we need to notify the main UI thread about this in order to update the icons that are shown in the editor. Therefore we have to make the mesh info class inherit from the view model base and make the icon a notifying property. Now I'll add a new method that creates a second UI thread for generating the icons. Here I add a few things that might not be necessary for our use case but we should know that they exist and can be used when necessary. One of them is setting an unhandled exception handler for this thread. We could have done this for the main editor application as well in order to not crash when an exception is not caught but I'd rather get notified through a hard crash than using a log message which I might miss. Another thing that might not be necessary for our case is the synchronization context but it doesn't hurt having it either. And then we'll generate the icons using the current threads dispatcher. This part is actually the same as what we were already doing using the old method directly above this one. This time I use a darker background because I think it looks better. Now instead of creating an icon for the entire mesh, we create one for each submesh. 
We used to call this static method in order to render the geometry view to a bitmap target. However, now this should be moved to the new UI thread as well. Note that we can still use this method to generate an icon for the entire mesh by passing this boolean. The dispatcher should be shut down after we are done with it. Here we can also set a flag to indicate that we are done. Next we call dispatcher run in order to execute our code on this thread. One condition for UI threads is that they should use the single threaded apartment state. We also make it a background thread so that it terminates when the main application is shut down. Finally we start the thread which will execute our code. We wait for the dispatcher to finish before calling thread join. We shall basically dispose of it. At the end, the generated list of icons is returned. So now we don't need this method anymore and we can use the new method instead. We just take the first item in the list. Also, we no longer need a static instance of the geometry view. One thing that took me by surprise was that apparently the initialize component method that's called in the constructor of every user control is not thread safe. So running the application would cause random crashes with no useful error messages. Serializing access to this method by using a lock object fixed the problem. And we can also get rid of this. I'll do a little bit of documentation here and then we can test the new icon generation. Now again I'll drop the sponsor mesh onto this one. Again, pay attention to the amount of memory that's used as well as the time it takes to update these icons. It took 6 seconds and the memory usage barely increased, during which we could also keep using the editor. Compare that to the 8GB and more than 1 minute of unresponsive UI and I'd call that a good improvement for the user experience. Let's do a little bit of code cleanup while we are here. These can be regular lists since they don't change for the same mesh asset. Oh, I forgot to turn this off. So we were exporting the mesh data every time we loaded the geometry. Let's also use this new notation for copying a collection to a list, an array or other collection types. Also we have to move this line in the cache block. I think that's it pretty much for today's video. Before wrapping up, let's do a quick fix for an issue that was reported on GitHub. The issue is that some buttons related to building the game code and adding new scripts, for example, remain enabled when the application starts. That's while the game code is being built, during which they are supposed to be disabled.
This can be fixed by setting the commands before we start building the game code. There. And I think I'll stop here for today. In the next video, we are going to add various improvements to the overall interactions that have mostly to do with game entities and geometry components. As always, thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.